Hello and welcome back to Teen Summer Reading 2021 July edition. This Today we will be making the catapult, which is this thing right here. You will need this. You will need your instructions that are right here. They are not necessarily the, the best, but we will do our best to explain them and shoot you to the original creator, Brian Brocken, uh, his, his website to uh, get anything further. You will also need the string that was... Uh, the second set of, of dark brown string that is probably with the rest of your um, pocket sloth stuff. That's where I, I wound it all onto the same thing. You also have some sandpaper in your kit. This is what you'll be using in order to speed up this process so that the video is not a solid 45 minutes long. We will be using a Dremel tool for this, and for that I am actually going to turn over to a responsible adult with safety glasses, unlike me, which will be Mr. Brian Cheryl. Mr. Brian, take it away. Okay, hello everyone, Mr. Brian here, and today I'm help I'm here to help you guys make your catapult. Now, this is going to be what we're going to consider a problem-solving activity today. Because as you probably have noticed when you're looking at your instructions, as Ms. Kristen mentioned, these aren't the best. Uh, the other thing that you're going to find is that since these have been 3D printed, that all the little bits and everything, the sizes may vary so you might not find that your pieces will fit together as snugly as you'd like once you get them all popped out that is why we have included the sandpaper now as i'm working on popping out these pieces i want to talk about what type of catapult this is this is a da vinci catapult from the inventors um, and artist leonardo da vinci he uh, has several fun experiments and and paintings and inventions that you can look and see and a lot of them have been replicated in real life and have been made into large or full-scale things. One of his flying machines was actually used as a um, inspiration for uh, by Bob Kane when he was working on his part along with Bill Finger on the creation of the comic book character Batman. And so we're making what uh, these little small scale models are, what we like to call proof of concept models. And any of the factories or major um, businesses that deal in things such as, you know, cars, trucks, planes, boats, any of that, they'll always will start with a small scale model like this to see if whatever they're trying to prove as a concept will work. If that works, then they'll scale up and then they'll keep trying and testing and scaling up until they eventually get to the full-size project. Now, going back to what I was saying about some of these things, about have all of these pieces out. You can clean up the little extra pieces. You know, they'll snap off or you may need um, a pair of snips or scissors or something. Nail clippers probably would work. Yep, nail clippers would work. But on the end of these pieces, you'll see that the piece, they have angles. It's not just a straight little rectangle. There will be an angle on one side. It's not necessarily on both sides. And that's made to match up with the notches inside of some of the other pieces. So as you're going around with your sandpaper, or as I'm going to do with my Dremel, once I put on my safety glasses and a, and a mask, so I won't be, be uh, breathing in the dust, we'll go through here and uh, put all of our pieces together. And then we'll add our string and we will see if we can demonstrate Newton's third law of motion by getting something to uh, fly or at least hopefully get our catapult to fire. So now that I've gotten all of my pieces all um, kind of cleaned up and ready to go, I'm going to go and get all of my pieces sanded so we can put them together.
Okay, now when you're working and you're sanding on your pieces, you want to be sure that you don't sand away too much because you don't want to ruin the structural integrity of the pieces that you're working with. We want it to fit, but we also want it to still be strong enough to handle the motion that we want it to have. Now, I've got these two pieces, our first two pieces, pretty well stuck together. The next one's going to be real easy. I don't have to do any sanding for this. This wheel is just going to slide here on the end part of this piece. And then we'll uh, just, you'll see how this piece is kind of hexagonal. And that kind of matches up with the inside of this. So this will go and you'll have to just work on it until it will push on the end of this piece. Then we can move on to the next one. Okay, now, you'll find that when you're snapping out your pieces, you have one little narrow piece that's like this. Be very careful not to throw this away. This is going to be what's used. There's a tiny slot here on the side of this, and then this is going to slide through and try to get out on the other side. Now, you may have to um, use some scissors or if you have some pliers you know see whatever your parents or guardians will give you permission to use that you may have around the house to uh, try to work this in because you have to make sure that um, all of the little channels and things that it goes through that there it's open and that you can uh, fit it on your way through so now you may find like mine, this seems pretty sturdy. So another thing you may end up doing with this is if you want, you can just put it in like part way and then maybe break it off. I would definitely try to make sure that if you have something that you can help you clean out the little channels that you use that, that will help you insert this little piece as far as you have. Um, it's just something for added stability and added security. Like I said, with my pieces, and since we're having to sand them anyway, I don't anticipate really needing this piece, but I wanted to show you guys that that's what this extra little bit is in case you were curious. Okay, the next two pieces here, this is gonna be the arm of our catapult. And, um, it has a little base. The base has these two little pieces on here. Now I will say that you will need to be really careful as you do this because you know when you go to attach this end to this, don't push too far back. You're gonna break this back part and then the arm is not going to work. We need this to rest and fit just inside here. That way that this arm will still be able to twist back and forth. So again, you may look and see, okay, this thing looks like it's gonna be a little big to do that without this breaking. So again, I'm gonna sand off a little bit here. our two main supports. These are the ones that have the notches in them and they're long pieces which also have the notches on those. So when you go to sand and get these cleaned up to where they'll fit in, make sure that you don't sand off too much on the notched side because you want to make sure that it's going to be able to fit in the, the um, spots here on the main support.
Mr. Brian has turned this back over to me because I have a little bit more experience in tying tiny knots with little pieces of thread. So what we're gonna do at this point is uh, you may want to thread it on a needle. You'll find it a whole lot easier trying to get it through tiny little holes like that when it's on a needle than, uh, than not. But pretty much you just thread it through, wind it around like the directions say, and then tie it off to the pieces uh, the, the curved pieces right here. I call it the harp just because that's what it looks like. Um, but yeah, that's what we're, oh man. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Also want to tie on a piece into the trigger rope slot which is right there and I'm gonna to try to do this without having to thread the needle again because it's really just poke it through one spot and tie a knot. If you find that you didn't tie it tight enough to for to actually get enough tension on the harp to do it without pulling it all the way back here. You can undo it and completely redo it, or you can just kind of wrap the, try to make another round with it, which is very difficult, but I'm gonna do it anyway. hopefully give me the tension that we need to actually fire the catapult. Yeah, that's better. So when you're doing this and you've got your threads all trimmed back and out of the way, you will pull it back until you've got some tension, slide your trigger into one of the grooves in the gear, and then pull the trigger rope to release the tension, and it pulls forward. So here in just a second, we're gonna to try to shoot one of the little pom-poms. When you are actually doing this, you need to be very careful not to try to shoot anything heavy or at somebody because the force behind this is entirely dependent on that rope. So if you've got a whole lot of tension on it and there's a whole lot of force, you're going to wind up shooting, you know, hurting someone or breaking something. So you need to be very, very careful with these things. That's why I'm using pom-poms. Uh, another suggestion is mini marshmallows. But pretty much just, Balance it on there, if possible. And pull. 